Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I'm going to take a look at the July My Paper Pumpkin, which I think is extraordinarily cute. It has these adorable little succulent plants in it, which is my favorite because I love the desert. So here's what comes in a My Paper Pumpkin kit. You get a sheet with all the instructions, and then you can go to paperpumpkinhowto.com for instructions. There are these adorable airmail envelopes in this month's kit and some 3M adhesive that will hold them closed. These cute little paper clips with the ribbons already tied. Some little panels with a floral element in a gray background. Some stickers that are accents. Of course, the stampin' spots that you need. And this redonkulously cute stamp set with a coffee cup and the succulents and some fun greetings. So I started by making some masks with these Avery removable label sheets. I'll provide a link to those on my blog. And I stamped five of these little succulents and I masked them off so it looks like a couple of them are behind the row of the first three. Now that they're masked off, I'm just gonna create kind of a sunset scene. When you're sponging on top of a mask, you should sponge starting on the mask and pulling the sponge off. You don't want to sponge against the mask because you might lift the corners a little bit. So that's what you see me doing at the beginning. I'm going to start by sponging Daffodil Delight all over the whole panel. I just have a skinny panel for the center of my card. Since it is skinny, you'll want to hold it down so that you don't risk buckling it. The second layer is going to be pumpkin pie, just to give it a little sunset glow. This is like a tequila sunrise color scheme to me. Those of you who went through the 80s with me will know what I'm talking about. Everybody else who's a millennial, just keep looking at your phone, Instagram something. You'll get it later. For the final layer, I'm doing melon mambo for the rosy glow on the bottom. But you'll see that once I'm done with all three of those colors, I take the lighter color and go on top of each darker color that really blends the three of them together. So don't just stop once you have the three colors. Go ahead and blend back with the lighter colors. Now I'm gonna remove the masks. Look how cute these are, they are so cute. I love this kind of plant in my landscape. I love the weather in the desert. I love everything about this. Now you can start to see that I put those two on top so that they look like they're behind the three in the front row. So it looks like you're looking out over a desert scene, which I love. Now mint macaron is what I'm using to color the base layer of the succulents. Put a little re-inker in the ink, ink pad lid. And then I'm just gonna use a watered down, I'm gonna use my blender pen and just take a watered down little puddle of the re-inker to get an all over color. And this is kind of a sage color, it's perfect for the desert. And then I'm gonna come back with full strength Reinker, just dipping my blender pen right into the reinker to add shading to each one of these little leaves. Are they leaves on a succulent? I don't know if they're leaves or petals. I don't really know the answer to that. I'm sure someone out there watching is an expert. But I just want to add some depth and give it sort of a 3D look because the great thing about these plants is they are so dimensional. And I want to recreate that with the full strength reinker. I also go into the areas between each of the plants and I make those extra, extra dark because that's what you would see if you were really looking at them. And this just takes just a second and it's so much fun. I really enjoyed this, and I think that the sage color of the mint macaron is just a beautiful in combination with the rosier colors of the sunset. 
good complementaries there. So I'll add in some extra dark shadows, especially on the back layer. You really want that to look like it's behind your first layer. And so down at the bottom where there would be natural shadow, and then on the second layer of plants, go ahead and make it super dark. And I think you'll like it better. Blur your eyes or take a picture with your iPhone to see if you have enough shadow. Now I want to make sure that I get the sentiment straight. So I am going to set this up on the Misty. The sentiment is actually from the Garden in Bloom stamp set, which how perfect is that with my little succulent garden. And no matter how I try to get it straight, actually on the panel, I never can. So thank goodness for the grid on the lid of the Misty. I can correct my mistake. But since I don't trust my eye, I do want to test it just on the grid paper. So I'll ink this up. I'm using Memento. And here's the rest of the Garden in Bloom set. And then I'll stamp that on the grid paper and just make sure that it really is on a line. And it is. You can see that's perfectly straight. So it is ready to go on my card. Now, I had bought some magnets at Home Depot, not the ones that come with the Misty, and they don't hold at all. I don't know what happened. So I'm switching it out for another, for my actual Misty magnet because those half working magnet stress me out. Now I'll just stamp this down, see if I need to stamp it again. And I don't. It actually looks very crisp and really super pretty. I love this kit. I hope you'll give it a look. Head over to my blog and check out the close-up on it and the instructions. And thanks for watching.